Raising a child as a single parent has to be one of the most difficult things you can do on this earth. Whether you're a single parent right now or whether you're in a married relationship, I encourage you, listen to this podcast because you're going to be encouraged, you're going to be challenged and convicted as I talk with my friend Marissa Morris on the challenges and joys of single parenting. Hey, I'm Jay Holland, and I want to welcome you to Let's Parent on Purpose. This is a podcast for families who want to thrive and not just survive their parenting years. Each week, I'll bring you an insight or an interview that will help strengthen your marriage, parenting, or your walk with Jesus. If you find this podcast helpful, I would ask that you subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also go to letsparentonpurpose.com and search for past topics, as well as get a hold of free resources that I've created to help your family. Thank you so much for listening today. I really trust that you're going to be encouraged by my conversation with Marissa Morris. Marissa, I actually met her at a church camp a number of years ago that uh, our children were coming to. I think it was my daughter's very first year as a camper, uh, maybe my first year as a youth pastor at my current church, Covenant Fellowship Baptist Church. And Marissa was just a phenomenal young lady uh, at that time, still is. Um, Marissa now is a registered nurse in Knoxville, Tennessee. She's a single mama to the most loving, energetic, fun two-year-old on the planet named Urban. And most importantly, she loves Jesus, and she hopes that his grace is evident in her story. Uh, Marissa shares a very vulnerable story with us, um, very raw of how she ended up as a single parent, um, filled with not only the grace of God, but maybe some, some challenges to those of us who are regular in the church body, uh, those of us who are um, raising parent or raising children with a spouse, um, or whether you have kids in the house or not at this point, maybe some challenges of how we come across sometimes completely lacking the grace of God for those that need it the most. Now, I also had experience as a, as a single parent after my first wife passed away. I was a single dad for a period of time before marrying Emily, and I got to say, it was among the hardest things I've ever done in my life. So. Um, you will be encouraged as you listen here. And uh, also just a couple of other things. Marissa has graciously offered her testimony in written form that I'm going to put in the show notes for today. Um, so you can catch Melissa's testimony. If you want to read and kind of know the background of how the Lord worked in her life, you can get that at the show notes here right on your podcast app or going to letsparentonpurpose.com and checking out the show notes for this episode. And then the last thing is, uh, as I said in the last couple of weeks, if everybody listening to this podcast was able to contribute 25 cents per week, all of the production costs would be fully covered. Um, if you are not in a place to contribute 25 cents a week, then I completely, I mean, honestly, I get it. I don't want to um, minimize that. But if you are in a place um, to do maybe a dollar a week, because it's really hard to set up giving for 25 cents a week. Uh, so like if, if a quarter of the people listening are able to give a dollar a week, all of the production costs would be covered. So if that's you and you might say, this might be one of the ministries that I can support this coming year, go to letsparentonpurpose.com. There's a give button in the top right corner, and you can do that through Patreon or PayPal. And if you do, I would like to send you a personalized video thank you message for getting behind the podcast. And without further ado, enjoy my conversation today with Marissa. Marissa Morris, thank you so much for joining me today and happy birthday. Thank you. Marissa, we first met when you were my daughter's camp counselor at this cool little camp called Camp Living Stones in Inglewood, Tennessee. Do you remember when that was? I do. I remember it was my last summer at camp and I remember Brooklyn very distinctively. She was very sweet and I feel like we developed a really good relationship while she was my uh, camper. Yeah. And I think that might have been her first year. It was. Yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah. So she just finished high school and her associate's degree two weeks ago. Crazy. So you are entering the, the old people. Like you're going to start getting these mile markers where you feel like you're old for the rest of your life. Yep. <laughs> well, congratulations. And I was excited to have you on here today. You have a unique story from some of the other guests that we have, but your story is not incredibly unique in, in our in our world and culture, but you have the Lord throughout yours. And so I think that helps make it a, a lot more encouraging. So just like you to go back into it, you're, you're a mom, Urban, is that right? Yes. And how old's Urban? 
Urban turned two in October. All right. And uh, share a little bit about your background story of, of parenting, if you'd care to. Yeah. So Urban's dad and I had dated for about two years when I became pregnant. We weren't married, so we were sinning. And when I was four months pregnant, his dad left us and said that he didn't want to be a dad. And so that was that was really hard to walk through. But like I shared with you beforehand, I remember sitting there staring at a positive pregnancy test and just hearing so loud in my spirit the Lord saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Mm. And so I knew from the beginning that the Lord had a purpose in creating my son's life. And I really clung to that, that the Lord creates life. I don't create life. Amen. God does that. And when God creates, he doesn't make mistakes. Yeah. And it's always with a purpose. And so I had this overwhelming peace knowing that my son was being knitted together by God's own hands and that he had a purpose in this world that was unique to him. Hmm. That's beautiful. But that was met with resistance from from Urban's father, right? Mm -hmm. It was. So we both grew up in really conservative Christian backgrounds and where my family chose to support me and love me, his parents did not. So his parents didn't want to be involved in Urban's life, didn't want to be associated with me. I ruined their Christian reputation. Wow. Well, that, that's just devastating to hear. Even though you've, you know, you've shared it with me before, <laughs> every, time, every time hearing it, it's just hard to hear. What was that like to experience? It was, it was hard. I think that for me, had my relationship with the Lord had not been as strong as it was, I think it would have affected me differently. Mm -hmm where I think that I really chose to cling to the Lord and choose to fully trust in His promises. He chose to ignore the Word of God. Yeah. And I had shared with you, you know, that He had, the first conversation we had was Him telling me to have an abortion. And so that was difficult to walk through. My always response was no, that that was not an option for me. But that was hard, having known someone for that amount of time and having had those conversations of, no, I'm pro-life. And then when the rubber meets the road, that actually wasn't the case. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, there's a big difference between being hypothetical pro-life and then it being right there in a decision that's going to affect you for the rest of your life. And so mm -hmm. that's really where your faith and beliefs come out. What was the response of your church? It was mixed. Mm -hmm. I, um, like I shared with you, I was called a whore. I um, lost friends. One of my very dear friends no longer speaks to me. I was told a lot of really not nice things about my worth and my value because I had a child and wasn't married. And even to this day, there are people that I will pass at church or out in public and they won't even make eye contact with me anymore. But I also experienced the body of Christ like it was designed to be. Mm -hmm. I had people come alongside me and pray with me and support me and all those decisions that come with being a new parent and and just really just guided me and loved me right where I was. And so I got to experience the church as God designed it in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. That's and beautiful. so it was those moments to me are really sweet. That's great. You know, that it's it's sad that you get outside of, of the church and most people at this point wouldn't bat an eye at a single parent or even the circumstances or even care about the circumstances behind it. And, and I think that's one of the challenging things. You know, as Christians, we want to uphold purity. We want to uphold what's right. But at the same time, I mean, realistically, a very, very high percentage of people are engaging in premarital sex and to just bring the hammer down on the ones that happen to get pregnant and choose to keep their pregnancy. Because it's not even just to get pregnant, it's the ones that choose to keep their pregnancy, which is a tremendous act of bravery and courage because it is a it is a lifelong and life-altering decision. And both of them are lifelong. You know, if you get pregnant and choose to terminate your pregnancy, it is a lifelong, life-altering decision. And, you know, you know, many people that have done that with horrible regret and and have sought repentance and, and healing from the Lord from it. But I think I'm happy that you experienced the beauty of the body of Christ as well. But just an encouragement to to any of us listening, remembering that there but the grace of God go I. And 
you know, whether it's like, I, you know, I've participated in things and just, you know, didn't get caught or, you know, circumstantially had one more thing happen or two more things happen, I could have been right there. I think in just about every scenario that I can think of in life. Yeah, circumstantially, you know, the Lord protected me here or there, but it could have gone very different. And so just the importance of meeting meeting sin with grace, especially repentant sin with grace. This wasn't something that you were running around flaunting and, you know, trying to, to brag about. This was an incredibly vulnerable time of your life. And I'm sorry that that you had to experience the hurt that you did from the supposed people of God. But I, I hope that listening to your story would be an encouragement to us that it doesn't have to be that way. It shouldn't be that way. And that, man, how critical to to get to minister grace to somebody in that time period. So you then entered parenthood. We're going to, I'm sure, fast forward through some of this, but but you entered parenthood. And, and I think today what I would like to do is, is a lot of the discussion just be around some of the uniqueness and challenges of uh, single parenthood, how that relates to you know, trying to raise a child in the Lord, some of the ways that the body of Christ can make up for the lack of a two-parent home, and the reality that sometimes that we have parents, even parents that listen to this, that you might have two parents there, but one of them is is absent spiritually or just kind of a body in, in the home. And so I know there's a lot of moms and there's dads as well that even with another parent in the home, they feel very, very alone in there. But you have never experienced uh, anything but single parenting here. So some of this it may just be like a fish in, in the water where you don't know the difference. But standing out, what do you feel like are some of the the unique challenges that, that you're very aware of that like this is different because I'm doing this alone? Mm-hmm. I'm very aware of the fact that, you know, a relationship between a husband and a wife is symbolic of the relationship between Christ and the church. So it's not lost on me that that's missing Mm. in our home. And so that's something that I pray for a lot is that the Lord will provide godly men in his life that will show him what it means to be a godly man Mm -hmm. and that the Lord will equip me and lead me to raise him to be a godly leader Mm -hmm. for his household one day. Yeah. And, And you have to work as well as, as mm-hmm. raising him, right? So a little bit on my background, I was married. My first wife passed away when my daughter was three and a half, and I had a couple year span of single parenting. And I can't think of anything harder to do on a long-term basis than raise a child by yourself and try to remotely take care of yourself in the process. So what does your schedule kind of look like? Because you are you got this little boy and this job that you're responsible to. So what does your schedule look like? So I'm a registered nurse. Mm-hmm. So when Urban was born, I was actually working night shift, three 12-hour shifts a week. Oh, wow. And so um, I did that when I was pregnant. And then when I was on maternity leave, I actually was offered a day shift position. And then now I'm currently working Monday through Friday. I'll be starting actually in a cancer center um, oh, wow. when I get back in January. But that'll be Monday through Friday, no weekends, no holidays. So it'll be a little bit easier of a schedule. So that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. So on a personal level, what are some ways that that you look to try to take care of yourself beyond? I think taking care of your kid is a natural Mm -hmm. thing. But what are some things that that you realize I have to do this to be well for both of us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, you know, my personal time with the Lord is vital. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't be a parent that the Lord called me to be unless I'm actually spending time with the Lord. And one thing, Jenny Price has been on here mm-hmm. a lot. She's um, a really close friend of mine. And one thing that she has said, you know, our children need to see that the most important relationship we have is with the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so I um, really cling to that. And, you know, sometimes just having time to ourselves to, I don't know, go get a pedicure mm-hmm. or, you know, those kinds of things can be nice as well. Those days are very few and far between. But my mom is really sweet. She'll watch Urban sometimes so that I can go and do those things and be able to have that time just by me, you know, mm-hmm. so. That's good. One of the things that I remember during that time period was just this feeling of being overwhelmed. Like I can handle, mm-hmm. I can handle the regular routine pretty good, but when big decisions come or big events, like a sickness that lasts more than a day or two or something like that. That's when all of a sudden I felt crushed in, in the process. So are, do you experience that, that like you got your routine down well, but the kind of the massive ones, how do you get the help that you need 
in those situations? Yeah, it's it's hard. You know, like a couple weeks ago, Urban was woke up at 3 a.m. throwing up. And I think those are the times when I notice it, like you said, more because you're trying to do all the things. You're trying to be mom, but trying to clean and get him ready so he can lay back down. And those are hard. And sometimes I don't know how I make it through the night, <laughs> <laughs> those, those kinds of nights. But one thing I know is that the Lord is always there. Mm -hmm. And I really just take a lot of peace in that and knowing that the Lord walks with me through yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, your community is so incredibly important in that. And, and I think, you know, one of the challenges is if you're, if you're parenting alone, you've got so many more things on you just kind of naturally because you're you're dealing with all the household duties by yourself as well as taking care of the kid that and and then working you can feel spent for any kind of community but how have you been able to carve out some kind of faith community and then do you see how that's helped you in in the longer run yeah for sure i go to sunday school class and i have a really great group of people in my group that really love the lord and really just love us and um the men in my sunday school class will spend time with urban interact with him much just means the world to me, mm -hmm. you know, and then we get together periodically for holidays and things like that and just to spend time together. And that's just been huge for me. You know, they really just walk through everything with me from coming back from maternity leave and struggling with forgiveness and grace from what I went through, but also just being a huge support, being a group of people that I can say, hey, we're struggling with this at home. What what can I do? What can mm -hmm. advice can you give me? And and so and just knowing that they love the Lord and really strive to be the church body for each other has mm -hmm. been that's the best community, you know, that we could have is being inside the body of Christ. And I've got a lot of support as far as that goes. And so I'm very thankful. You know, I think it's really important to point out this is really different. What you're talking about is is so very different than you know, we still go to church because I think one of the trends as a pastor, one of the trends I'm seeing is it's getting harder and harder to get people to commit to showing up for more than the one hour service on Sundays. And let's be honest, like it can be really good. The preaching can be phenomenal. The worship can be encouraging. You can get all of that. You can have this sense of I'm in a bigger group. But ultimately, if you're just coming to the Sunday morning service and you're going home, that worship service, you're kind of doing it alone still. You could have replaced it with a really good movie about a church service at that point. And so as a, as a single mom jumping into a Sunday school class or a small group or a life group, it's, it's an extra time commitment. But man, that's like, that's like uh, investing for retirement, really. Like, yeah, it's taken some money out of your check now, and it might be money that you feel like you really need now, but the dividends are far beyond what you could do. And so I, I really commend you. And, and I think what you, what you see is you do it the first few times, and it really can feel like a lot more work. But once you get some reps with that community, once you really start sharing life together, and once you get, you know, you, you're, you're in a good Bible study, but once that Bible study starts bleeding over into you guys feeling comfortable and sharing life together, it's hard to think of how would I do this without this group? You know, how would I, how would I continue without this group? And I remember that from, because when I, when, when, uh, when my wife died, I ultimately moved to a different city for a number of different reasons. And I was solely dependent upon the church at that point. And so I moved to an apartment complex where there were a couple other family members from the church. You know, we had life group together. But it's like any break that I had was dependent upon me trusting the family of God to do. And then being in with the group, like there were things I needed to share. There were perspectives that I needed to hear because I was totally, you know, you know, kind of counseling myself in so many ways that I needed the the family of God to be in there, much less the fact that any time that I was with the church, there was some believer, whether it was like a formal Sunday school setting or just whoever's doing childcare, which a lot of times ended up being like a teenager for a small group. Here's somebody else that has the Lord in them that's pouring into my child, and it's an incredible gift. And so, you know, one of the big things, if you're a single parent, that I would encourage you as you're listening, I can't think of few things. I, I think I think Marissa hit on it. Your personal relationship with the Lord, carving out that time of filling your well up, as well as letting your child see that, where it's not just something you do like when they're gone or before they're awake, but where they, they get to see it. That's hugely important. And then going beyond showing up for church to getting into some kind of small group community will, will go so very, very far 
you know, Jesus will give you the mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and, and these things that, that your, your child needs. So Marissa, as, as we think through challenges coming up in, in your life, and, and a, a lot of it is like, we don't know what those challenges are, but what are the, some of the things that like, as you see, as, as your little boy grows up that, that you feel like this, these are ones that I'm really trusting the Lord in because I don't see the provision right now, or I don't really see how this is going to work out right now. What are some of those things that just you feel like uniquely you you get to trust the Lord in? One of those was, you know, I'd already kind of already mentioned was just trusting that the Lord will provide godly men into his life to mentor him and disciple him. That will show him what it means to be a godly man and, and show him what it means to walk through with integrity and grace. And, and so those are things that I do, I definitely have to trust mm-hmm. the Lord with. And You know, like any parent, I guess there's things that I, you know, worry about. Like, I worry when we start school, you know, like, who's going to take them and pick them up? And, you know, those kinds of things. But also, you know, as he starts dating, as he starts driving, the first time he rides a bike, you know, those things that, like, predominantly your dad does Mm -hmm. for you. And so those are the things that I pray a lot about that the Lord will just you know, be there with me and help equip me as I'm teaching him those life things that typically come from right. your dad. And so, yeah. yeah. All right. So I, I want to keep this one a little bit shorter for a couple of reasons. One mm-hmm. is if, if you're a single parent and you're listening to this, the last thing I want to do is like lay another mountain of expectations on you. What you're doing is really hard. And, uh, but it's really good. And, and, uh, there's been a couple of tears. This is an audio, not a video one. So you don't get to see the bucket of tears here, but <laughs> Hey, you're doing a great job. And a couple of the things that I feel like are important for listeners to hear. First off, if you're a single parent, I want to commend you for staying in the fight and staying in the battle and especially for staying in the Lord. Like you're listening, if you're listening to this and you're a single parent, you're listening to parenting podcasts on top of everything else you have to do. And that's a big deal. Like that shows a steady long-term commitment that you want support and you want to get better in your parenting. And I just commend you in that. And I hope a couple of the things that you hear is that even though it's hard, the Lord is in it and he hasn't forgotten you and he will provide. Just because you don't see how he's going to provide right now doesn't mean he won't provide. Nothing that you're going through is taking God off guard. There's nothing that he has to scramble to pick up the pieces of. And his redemptive story and the story of Jesus will work right through you, right where you are. And so, so hold tight and keep trusting. But how, you know, if I was going to encourage you towards two things, if you're not doing them, number one, as Marissa said, that time with the Lord, that personal time with the Lord. And then number two, getting yourself plugged into a community of God to where it's not just commit to going to the church service, but getting plugged into a community of God. And then second, for those who are listening, hey, I really commend you. If you are in a married relationship and you're still listening, I thank you for your tenderness and for listening through. And one of the things that I would just encourage you as you listen to this to realize that you have in your midst, wherever you are in the country or in the world, wherever you are, you have single moms and you have single dads around you. Sometimes you have spiritually single moms and dads where you know, they may have another spouse in the home, but but spiritually they're going at it alone. And so I, you know, I don't want to lay another giant burden on you, but understand that God has blessed you with relationships and resources and responsibility. And some of those things are, you know, maybe you can adopt a single parent family and just say, hey, can can you just be a part of our family? We want you to come for dinners when you want, you know, we want to offer free babysitting for you to just get out and do whatever you need. But if you're a married couple, realizing how difficult your own stuff is. Now think about one of you being gone and and how challenging that would be. And so I just want to encourage you to think about the single parents in your midst and uh, reach out in ministry to them and, and do it as a, an act of love, a servant service of Jesus, and trust that God will provide for you as well. Like you may think right now, there's no way I could do this. I don't have any margin. And trust that if you're doing something for the Lord like this, he's going to provide. So Marissa, thank you so much. It's I know it's very vulnerable to share this kind of story, and I trust that it's going to be a real blessing to um, to others. So thank you and happy birthday. Thank you. Friend, thanks so much for listening today. I pray it's been a blessing to you. And if it has, please share this episode with somebody that you care about. If God lays it on your heart, I'd love for you to consider joining our Patreon support community. You can find out about that by going to letsparentonpurpose.com. Finally, If you've got a topic that you'd like to hear me address, send me an email at jay at letsparentonpurpose.com. 
or give me a shout on the Let's Parent on Purpose Facebook page. Hey, please never forget that parenting is a marathon, not a sprint, and that you need a good church family to thrive through all of the different challenges that you're going to face. Keep pointing each other to Jesus and enjoy the gift of life that God's giving you today. Hey, whatever season you're in, it won't always be this way. So set your hope on Christ and not your circumstances. Have a blessed day, and I'll talk to you soon.